today. Would you all please rise for the recognition of our colors presented by the AMVETS Clinton Post 28. Post the colors. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Probably in your way. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Run! Hold! Run about! American Legion, Post Bellevue. American Legion, Post Comanche.
American Legion. American Legion Post DeWitt. American Legion Post Fulton. American Legion Post Miles. The Marine Corps League. The Patriot Guard Riders. Legion Post Right, excuse me, Legion Riders Post 154 from Bettendorf. Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 776 from Bettendorf. VFW Post, Comanche. VFW Post, Sevilla. VFW Post, Savannah. <laughs> Joining me on stage is Cyrus Kola and Ashton Corbin. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Units. Order. Arms. Units. Post colors. I'd like to ask Reverend Bob Berrick to join me on stage for the invocation. Let us pray together. Almighty, gracious, and loving God, we ask your blessing on this gathering. Be present with us as we honor and remember men and women, your sons and daughters, and our family and friends who offered themselves in the service of this country, which has been founded on your ways. They gave themselves to protect their families, save the world from tyranny, and to ensure freedom for all people. May we all keep our focus on you and ask that you continue to use this great nation for good in the world. Today, dear God, as we officially welcome the Vietnam Veteran Memorial to Clinton, Iowa. We especially remember those who died in this war. Comfort us with your Holy Spirit as we mourn our loss. Strengthen us as we remember their sacrifice. Stand by us 
when we see their faces in our memories. Bring healing to our hearts as we feel the deep pain of missing the love bond and camaraderie of our fellow soldiers. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for being ever faithful to us and walking with us in this life and in eternity. Amen. Thank you, Padre. Please be seated. Prisoners of War, Missing in Action. Paul Williams will do the ceremony. Comrade Chaplin, present the opening prayer. Almighty God and Everlasting Father, we praise you and glorify you. Thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon our great nation. Father, we ask you to guard our missing comrades in their efforts to survive and return home to their loved ones. If they perish, Lord, we ask you to the place you have prepared for them, and they will rest in eternal peace. Those who have served and those who are currently serving the Uniformed Armed Services of the United States are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasure, pleasures, there are others who have endured and may still be enduring the agonies of pain, deprivation, and internment. Before we begin our activities today, we will pause to recognize our POWs and MIAs. We call your attention to this small table, which occupies a place of dignity and honor. It is set for one, symbolizing the fact that members of our armed forces are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones and families today, so we join together to pay our humble tribute to them and bear witness to their continued absence. This table is set for one. It is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single red rose in the vase signifies the blood they may have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep the faith that while awaiting their return. The yellow ribbon on the vase represents the yellow ribbons worn by, on the lapels of the thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper accounting of our comrades who are not among us today. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless fallen tears of families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us today. The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home away from their captors to the open arms of a grateful nation. Let us pray to the Supreme Commander that all our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Comrade Chaplin. Almighty God, we praise Thee, we glorify Thee, and we thank Thee for sparing us from the grasp of our enemies. Grant us full understandings of the sufferings being endured by our comrades being held as prisoners of war or are still missing. Especially do we seek thy support for their loved ones. May thy grace be with them always, giving them the strength to do their daily tasks and the courage to meet the problems of life. We pray for those missing comrades who have been called to thy bosom, that whatever justice they have been denied in this life has been granted them a hundredfold. Amen. Oh. 
units are ten ton. Color guard prepared to present tribute to the POWMIA table. Units present arms. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifices. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. Color Guard, retire the colors. Color Guard, stand up. Right shoulder, up. Forward, up. Be seated. I'd like to welcome Jill Davison of the Clinton County Supervisors for some opening remarks. Good afternoon. It's a beautiful day. Um, welcome on behalf of the Board of Supervisors to Clinton County and to this very, very moving and special event. We're happy to see so many of you here on this beautiful autumn day and for this very special occasion. Um, I personally, and I know the other board members, would like to thank the committee for their hard work and efforts to bring this wall to our county. It is truly an honor to be standing just a few feet away from such a monument, which is dedicated to those who serve their country with the ultimate sacrifice. And it is an honor to have those who have served and are serving our nation here today, along with many of their family members. We are a nation of rights and privileges, and we owe our thanks and deepest gratitude to those men and women who have protected these gifts of freedom and choice. I pray that our future generations will never forget the sacrifice made by these dedicated individuals and the loss that their loved ones have endured. And I have a special request to all you veterans that please tell your story to our younger generation. They should never forget what has happened to your comrades and the sacrifices that you also have made. So please tell your story. Um, I ask today that God would bless and keep them, those that have found their eternal rest by his side. God bless all our past, present, and future soldiers. You are the ones that are keeping us free from tyranny. And today, please, God bless America. Thank you and welcome. to introduce our guest speaker today, very happy and proud that Brigadier General Layer could join us. Currently he is at Rock Island Arsenal as the Deputy Commanding General for Mobilization and Operations at the Army Sustainment Command. You have his bios with you. You see it's a long and illustrious career. He was commissioned in 1982 and a graduate of West Point. To me, more importantly, in recent years, 2003, he was the commander of the 3rd Infantry Division Support Command, Camp Dogwood, Iraq. He returned to Iraq in support of the multinational division in Baghdad. 
in some of his past commands, the 101st Airborne Air Assault of Fort Campbell, and the 5th Special Forces Group out of Fort Bragg. Please join me in welcoming Brigadier General Brian Lair. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you so much. Uh, what a lovely day uh, for uh, an important trip <coughs> to some uh, American heroes who uh, perhaps haven't gotten all the recognition that they're due. Special greetings to uh, the members on the podium with me, uh, and in particular to the folks that have participated in the ceremony thus far. It's a beautiful day, but it's a tough day to carry the colors because the wind is blowing and uh, it would be a lot easier if you were all still 19. I want to thank everyone in the audience for being here today. Um, thanks to the people in the community for your hard work and devotion to our nation's history and our fallen heroes and for bringing this moving wall to uh, Clinton. You know, I've come uh, all the way from Rock Island to give what I hope is a relatively short speech um, in which I hope to express the gratitude of a grateful nation and the United States Army for the sacrifice of the fallen of all our wars and the tremendous loss and sacrifice of their families and loved ones. At this time of what has become another long war, we've learned once again that when a serviceman goes off to war, many others sacrifice and serve as well to include families and loved ones. For those of you who are here today who have done that, thank you. Today we will shine a light of service on another generation, rightfully so. Later in this ceremony, the names of those from Clinton County and neighboring counties who were lost in Vietnam and whose names are written on the moving wall will be read aloud. I wonder if it wouldn't be more appropriate for me to stop right here and simply let the names for themselves. After all, what can I say that would add to this sad roll call? And what could I do that could quantify the depth of their sacrifice? But since I was asked to come and speak for a few minutes, I hope I find a way to honor them with my words. I imagine that some of you, like me, have seen firsthand the random permanence of death delivered so swiftly, swiftly by the terrible sword of battle. It is possible that someone here held someone listed right over there while they breathed their last breath and made a promise that they would never forget. And you've come here today to reassert that commitment. Our nation fulfilled that promise and our own sacred national duty as well by etching those names in stone. The wall in Washington, dedicated in November 1983, reminded us then, and this moving wall reminds us again today, that regardless of the time, our national mood, or the perceived necessity of the conflict, the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform is both ultimate and permanent. And when you look at their names and see yourself reflected in that stone, it reminds us all that the sacrifice was made for us, that in our great government of the people, by the people, and for the people, that responsibility for those names belongs in part to all of us. So it's good and fitting that we pause and reflect on their sacrifice, and that we take advantage of the opportunity offered by this wall and how nice that it comes to us and we can once again think about them. This moving wall is a gift to many who will never make it to Washington, but have sacrificed so much through their association to one of those names. For many, these names are nothing more than letters etched in stone. To some, this honor roll is just a historical record, a chron chronological listing of the names of the Vietnam fallen, and in total a demonstration of the toll taken by our nation, over 58,000. 
yet to some, and perhaps some here today, those etched letters mean so much more than just a name. They reflect a life. Each name reflects a thousand memories, both happy and sad. To be sure, to those left behind, these names are a reminder of an ocean of tears. And in their reflection, they see in their own life, they see their own life redirected, families broken, faith shaken, dreams disrupted, and promises unfulfilled. There is nothing we can say that can add to the sacrifice made by those who died on our behalf, fighting for our freedom. All we can do is humbly and prayerfully thank them and vow that we will never forget them, nor forget what they did for us. I want to read to you a letter written in an earlier conflict by a soldier named Sullivan Ballou. He wrote, July 14, 1861, Camp Clark, Washington. My very dear Sarah, the indications are strong that we may move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. Lest I should not be able to write again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I shall be no more. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I'm engaged, and my courage does not halt or falter. I know how strongly American civilization now leans on the triumph of the government and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and sufferings of the revolution. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence could break. And yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me unresistibly on with all these chains to the battlefield. The memories of the blissful moments I have spent with you come creeping over me and I feel most gratified to God and to you that I have enjoyed them for so long. And hard as it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of, a future, of future years when God willing, we might still have lived and loved together and seen our sons grown up to honorable manhood around us. I have, I know, but few and small claims upon divine providence, but something whispers to me. Perhaps it is the wafted prayer of my little Edgar that I shall return to my loved ones unharmed. If I do not, my dear Sarah, never forget how much I love you. And when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. Forgive my many faults and the many pains I have caused you. How thoughtless and foolish I have oftentimes been. How gladly would I wash out my tears, every little spot, upon your happiness. But oh, Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flit on scene around those they loved, I shall always be near you in the gladdest days and in the darkest nights. Always, always. And if there be a soft breeze upon your cheek, it shall be my breath. As the cool air fans your throbbing temple, it shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Think I am gone and wait for thee, for we shall meet again. Sullivan Ballou was killed a week later at the first battle of Bull Run on July 21st, 1861, with that letter in his pocket. And you know, there are more than a million names on America's honor roll, representing all those who died in service to our nation. Each, like Sullivan, had a lifetime of dreams ahead. Each, like him, had someone like Sarah who spent the rest of their life wondering, what if? Some are the names of those who were killed more than two centuries ago 
fighting in the Continental Army, Army for freedom from British colonial rule. And some are the names of those who lost their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan in recent years. Some are the names of those etched upon this moving wall who fell fighting in the jungles and cities and villages and mountains of Southeast Asia, who displayed the same gallantry and valor and spirit as the American warfighters who came before them. And those who fight today with such honor and courage stand upon their shoulders. As a nation, we suffered some deep wounds because of the Vietnam War. But we came a long way towards healing those wounds when the Memorial Wall was built in Washington and when the moving wall began traveling across America. The wall sends a simple but powerful message that we will never forget. We will never forget all those who served in Vietnam, answered their nation's call, and did their duty as best they could. They have all earned a rightful place of honor in our nation's history and are all more than worthy of our utmost respect and undying gratitude. But more importantly, when we see those names, we will never forget what they represent, a life, a life sacrificed for our great nation. And in our reflection, I hope we all see that it's now our responsibility to keep that nation great. So to all the veterans here today, especially those who served in Southwest Asia. Thank you so very much for your service and sacrifice. And to those of you who know names, know these names, and shared in their lives, thank you for the sacrifice you have made for our country. I hope that thousands of people in Clinton and surrounding communities in Iowa and Illinois come to the moving wall. I hope that all of them are moved by what they see and feel move to contemplate the cost paid for their freedom, and move to reach out to any Vietnam veterans they may know in sincere gratitude. I hope that all who see the moving wall have an experience that they will never forget, and go from here vowing that they will always remember the people they never met, fought and died for them, and continue to do so today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today. And thank you for bringing the moving wall to Clinton. May God bless and keep you. May God continue to watch over our servicemen and women in harm's way. And may God always, always bless America. Tom Earhart, come up on stage with the musical rendition. It must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You were content to let me shine That's your way You always walk a step behind I was the one with all the glory You were the one with all the pain I want you to know I know the truth I would be nothing without you did you ever know that you're my hero? And everything I would like to be. I can fly higher than an eagle. Cause you are the wind beneath. My wings. It might have appeared to go unknown. 
to know, I know the truth, of course I know it. I would be nothing without you. Did you ever know that you're my hero? And everything I would like to be. I can fly higher than an eagle. Cause you are the wind beneath my wings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God for you. At this time, I'd like to invite Mayor Roger Holm to the stage where he will read the names of those from Clinton County lost during the Vietnam War. It is with respect, appreciation, and total gratitude that we read these names. Ronald Beck. Jack. L. Collins, Merritt Thomas Cousins, David Charles DeWitt, Anson Thorne Garrison Jr., Wayne Henry Hoffner, Edwin Joseph Luxted, Robert Charles O'Hara, Dwayne Reinhardt Passig, John Lee Reed, Daniel Philip Reistoffer, Robert William Schultz, Robert Joseph Shannon, Richard Laurie Stansbarger, Mark Ernest Stoltenberg, John Stradowski, Kenneth R. Stubblefield. Thank you. We have met at this time to commemorate our comrades who have answered the last call. The following read presentations will be performed by the following veterans organizations. Vietnam Veterans of America, Veterans of Foreign Wars, American Legion, Marine Corps League, Patriot Guard Riders, National Guard, and the Amvets. In commemorating the virtues of our departed heroes who served their country in their time of need, we now offer these symbolic tributes. The red wreath will be presented by the American Legion. symbolizes the zest of our departed comrades in upholding brotherhood, truth, and justice. White wreath. The white wreath is placed as a token of the purity of affection we have for our departed comrades.
The blue of our national standard symbolizes truth and fidelity. The blue wreath is placed in token of our sincere respect for all of our departed comrades. wreath is a symbol of eternity. Its color speaks to life everlasting, and we say that the deeds of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines on land, on sea, and in the air are immortalized in the hearts of a grateful people. Amazing Grace.
very much, Krista. If you would all please stand for our benediction. Fifty-eight thousand two hundred and sixty-two lost lives, five was sixteen years of age, and, and the oldest was sixty-two years of age of men and women that were lost in Vietnam. I, I count it an honor to stand here as a Vietnam veteran myself. Let us be at the attitude of prayer. Merciful and all wise God in heaven, I reach out to you in prayer for all of us as survivors of that place called Vietnam. For many a year there was a blame put on you for all the hardships many of us witnessed and endured. But down deep inside I recognize that you were more sorrowful about that war than we were. Help me and many others to accept the many counseling sessions and treatments that we were received as a result of this war. Help me and others to recognize that the only through Jesus Christ may these unseen scars on our hearts and souls be healed. I pray now for over 58,000 soldiers, brothers, and sisters that gave their lives in that war. And more so for the many that have died since that war with wounds to the body, the heart, and the mind. I also pray for the brothers and sisters that survived and still don't recognize that the only true healing can come from the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Place your hands on them as you did me and mold them into the true understanding of who you really are. May I add, dear Lord, that there are still over 2,200 called MIAs and POWs still missing. I truly believe that many of them are still alive. Let them recognize that even if our country has abandoned them, we have not, and you have not either. Please, if you will, stay with them, comfort them, and bring them home someday that we can greet them as none other. I thank you for softening my heart towards the end. Let us all that served and did not, and did not serve understand that that they were fighting for a righteous cause. And they, like we, just wanted to return home safely to our families. Please, oh God, be all of our point man in life. And lead us down that trail of life. And point out the pitfalls and the booby traps that the evil one has laid a snare for us. We all know that they are in front of us, so don't let us become something that is not pleasing to you. Keep us focused on the trail and purpose that you have laid for us. Now may the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds and our souls in the knowledge of the love of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us henceforth and forevermore. And may the people of God all say together, Amen. Please, re please, re please remain standing for the retiring of the colors. Units, up ten, hut. Units, mount colors. Retire the colors.
the moving wall. A very special thank you to the Clinton Historical Society, Jan Hansen, you know who you are, to whom this never would have happened. And I have a personal thank you for all of the veterans organizations who have helped in this event. Thanks for making it a very special day for Clinton County. Units, retire unit colors. Please be seated. The names of the military personnel lost during the Vietnam War from the following counties will be read by Grant Wilkie and Mike Carney. Carroll County, Clinton County, Jackson the names County. Of the, of the uh, soldiers who have been lost from Carroll County, Illinois. Nicholas Allen Berger. Stanley Allen Bullis. Thomas Malcolm Hergert. Joseph Vern Redmond. And these are the names of the lost soldiers from Rock Island County, Illinois. Ricky J. Almanza. Terry L. Banning. Carl T. Bauer. James Bishop. William W. Voce. James J. Branham, Dennis W. Brown, Jerry L. Denny, Donald L. Dryo, Denny W. Ingesser, Mark A. Foster, John B. Goltz, Darwin D. Gordon, George R. Graham, Alan E. Guy, Roger E. Jarvis, Michael A. Johnson, Michael R. Kale, Timothy W. Carney, James M. King, Kenneth J. Knopfer, Thomas L. Larson, Wayne Linderman, Donald G. Lukens, Paul L. Marchant, Joseph V. Matthias, Stephen C. Mosley, Randall A. Olson, David W. Ranson, James D. Rachel, George P. Reed, William J. Rissey, Charles J. Rogiers, Leroy A. Roast, Leroy F. Scheiska, Arthur D. Sinkson, John C. Smith, Roland C. Sorum, Raymond R. Varner, Jr., Paul P. Vavrosky, Gail K. Fogler, David B. Wainwright, Michael J. Warren, Robert L. Webster, Barry S. Wells, Michael K. Wunderlich, John P. Woner, James L. Wood of Ever Honored Memory.
This is from Whiteside County. Harry Arlo Amesbury. Michael Dennis Brightman. Jerry Saletti. Alvin James Damone. Ricky Lee Doyle. Dennis Keith Eads. Dale Henry Gibson. David Arthur Gray. Douglas John Hahn. Lawrence Edward Howard. Aaron Gilbert Johnson. Stephen James Kelly. Leonard Wayne Knox. Gary Allen Luttrell. Hans Lothar Mills. John R. Naughton. Jack Edward Searing. Stephen Charles Sullet, James, excuse me, John Marshall Smith, Glenn Allen Tompkins, Daniel R. Troy. This is from Jackson County, Ronald Beck, Larry John Buddy, Jerry Lee Collister, Ronald Ray Stop Sager. Gerald Stephen Pollister from Muscatine County, Larry William Brendel, Gary Lee Brookhart, Jerry Arthur Bunn, William Norris Kosak, Albert Dean Foster, James Dean Johnson, Charles Douglas King, Lanny Allen York. From Scott County, Wayne R. Anderson. Michael R. Ball. Allen R. Boone. Philip D. Cheek. Jerry P. Clark. James B. Cook. Lowell L. Crawford. Jerry W. Cutting, David K. Ditch, William D. Farrell, Donald L. Fleetwood, Carl R. Foster, Jimmy Lee Foster, Patrick L. Freak, Patrick L. Frick, Larry M. Grunwald, Michael D. Hahn, Wayne G. Hubbard, David W. Jones, Edward W. Knapper, James B. Laird, William E. Lamont, Joseph A. Mock, Michael K. Maloney, Charles A. Morse, Gary A. Neva, Carl J. Olson, Jesse J. Pina. Frank J. Quinlan, Jr. Vernon Chester Rudolph. Gary K. Rath. George P. Rogers. Reed W. Swartenfeger, Norton B. Simons, Reed W. Stoltenberg, John E. Swanson, Michael J. Utter, Robert J. Voss, David H. Wilkerson, John J. Wilson, Daniel L. Wisely. Thank you very much. It was my honor to read those names. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone here, especially up on the Diaz today, for joining us. General, thank you very much for those kind words. Appreciate your efforts. Everyone else, and to our youngest members, our scouting units here, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it.
<laughs> I know. I'll say a word for the wise. A word for the wise. Hi, Jim. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the wall. Thank you, Leanne, for everything. Thank you're you so welcome. much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, buddy. I am so proud to be part of it. <laughs> I put the guys on the reese up there. Hope you don't mind. Stop. It's a video camera. Yeah, yeah. I know it is. You got a hat for me? Oh, yeah, that's nice. Thank you. I want my hat. Oh, no, no. Oh, him. No, no, no. He's the banker. He's the banker. She needs a hat. Thank you.